In this episode of Trying Something New, we're gonna talk about why we didn't buy a big bougie RV, and we went for what, Jimmy? We got a used 1999 old girl with a lot of character and charm that we completely renovated completely. and gave a new lease on life. Oh. Let's check it out. We are a family of five that loves adventure, connecting with people, and trying something new. Ah! Try something new every day. Four years ago, we got rid of our house and all of our stuff and moved into an RV full time to give us the freedom to explore the world. Since COVID shut down international travel, we are back in the RV for more adventures until we get our sailboat sometime in 2021. Let's inspire each other along the way and live a life with no regrets. So hit that subscribe button and let's get ready to try something new. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little tour of what we did and how we renovated this old RV. All right, so first off, Jimmy talked about how we had everything reupholstered. It was all tapestry, you know, nothing we wanted. So we made this cool leather, we got everything two-tone, gray, with black piping on it. Um, in the kitchen, we added this little blue color because of course we love this turquoise blue. Um, and everything else, we painted it all, we sanded everything down, we did all the cabinets white, we added some turquoise splashes, just because we love that whole beach vibe, beach theme. We had an airbrush artist come in and touch up a few spots. He put love life in the front. We got this little beach scene. And in the bedroom, I'll show you after, each kid had their own little area with whatever they wanted. Um, and then let's talk about, so this is our living room. So we got a nice little shag rug to make it homey. I think for us, it's all about being homey. Like that really comfy, snuggly feel. We have little kids, so we just want it super fun for them and colorful. Um, and then so we added all these little touches, our little signs, inspire, creative, don't forget to be awesome, I can and I will. You know, we like all this inspirational, positive stuff. So when we originally had the idea of an RV, getting an RV, possibly moving into an RV, of course our eyeballs were huge. Because you see all those crazy Mac Daddy ones out there, a million slides out, it goes up, down, it expands all different ways. The ceiling has all these layers, lights, and this crazy Italian leather. And we're Marble like, and wow. Stainless appliances. Shiny and... object syndrome, <laughs> like look at that. But guess what? A big old price tag comes along with that big old bougie RV. And so we're like, ah, we don't need that, but we do want diesel. We had the list of wants, right? And then we started looking at some, we test drove one. We're like, wow, this is really nice. At first we started out like 200,000 and then we started calculating monthly payments and we're like, this is the same as a house. And we're like, wait, well, all right. Well, okay, we well, you know, we'll figure it out. What's our max that we want to spend a month? You know, and we went down that rabbit hole and then what happened? Well, we got down to let's maybe go with 100,000 and then we started looking at monthly payments. They were like eight to 900 a month. And then you add on whatever you're going to pay for an RV site and that equals $2,000 a month. And then we went, <laughs> Pump Step the on the brakes, right. what are we doing? And I'm sure people can relate. It's like, when you first are looking at something new, like say an RV, you're like, oh wow, I want all the bells and the whistles and this and that. But then you realize, wait a minute, the whole idea of downsizing your life, moving into an RV is to downsize everything, including the overhead, your payments, your output every month. Because when you hit the road, you don't wanna be responsible for all these bills. Or at least know? we don't anyway. <laughs> we don't, you know, we are super nomadic people. We don't like to be tied to anything. And so once we reeled back all of those wants and needs and what we thought we needed, and we said, you know what? We got 20 grand that we're gonna put down that on was, something. Yeah, that was our down payment to put down. We're on like, all right, we got 20 grand, we'll put down. But then we go, you know what? We don't want a monthly payment. The whole idea of this was to have no monthly payment, like as little overhead as possible because we like to travel international a lot and we want that money to go into traveling. And so that actually made things a whole lot easier because we took that money and Jimmy goes, actually it was you that, that did it, go, he's like, well, let me look and see. I didn't even think there was anything for 20,000 on the market. And then he started looking at RV Trader and he goes, wait, Sandy, there's actually like really nice ones, really nice RVs, older, class A's. Older, but nice, right? So I said, get the heck out of here. I want to look at this. So we started looking and literally there was cheaper ones too. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Like we can actually pay cash for the RV, have no monthly payment. And the plus side was that it may be older, but you can renovate the whole you thing. You can do whatever you want to I and mean, not look feel on, guilty. Look on Pinterest mind-blowing stuff that people have done with their RVs and fifth wheels and all of that. So 
that actually completely changed our, our ideas on everything. And we were like, you know what? That's way better than all these bougie RVs where it's not, it's not our style. The thing is too, if we bought one of these $100,000, $200,000 RVs, eventually someday you're gonna wanna sell and get some kind of your money back out of it. Yeah. So if you go into the inside and totally gut it and paint everything and or, rip yeah, out- Or yeah, customize it in a way like we're super colorful and we like all that. Not everybody does. <laughs> we ripped out all the window coverings. We ripped out, we ripped out everything from the headliner to the floorboards in this thing. All right, so a lot of people ask us where all the magic happens in the RV, and I have to say, this is one of the spots where the magic happens. When we lived in a house, uh, we have a professional editing bay upstairs in a spare bedroom. I had three monitors, super speakers everywhere, and I never thought that I could go to a laptop and edit, but this is what we do all day, every day when we're creating our videos for our YouTube channel. We shoot everything and come up here and edit. Beautiful view of where we are. Sometimes we're at the beach, so I'm looking out at the ocean. But yeah, that's it. This is where all the magic happens when it comes to editing. All right, so when we first originally got this RV, everything in here was brown and tapestry, old upholstery. So we found a guy that did hot rod upholstery. He came in, we ripped out all the seats, four bolts on each one, ripped out the couch, the chairs, dinette, all that stuff. We dropped it off over at his shop. A couple days later, maybe a couple weeks later, we picked it up and put it back in. It's been wonderful ever since. He redid all this. We spray painted the dash put a new little th super thin upholstery on there, spray painted this thing right here. Had a guy on Craigslist come over and redo the doghouse, new carpet, and had another guy come over and did the floors for like 150 bucks. And the guy that did the upholstery also redid the ceiling as well, because it was like um, a carpet material. And whoever was in here before smoked cigars every once in a while, so it had that nasty cigar smell. And so we thought we'd go through and just give it a fresh rejuvenation so that we can enjoy newness because we like new, even though it's old. So, we'll rewind a little bit. So I started looking on RV Trader. They had a 1999 Winnebago, which is what we have right here, uh, for $20,000. And I was looking at the floor plan. We really liked the floor plan. And as you went up to all the way to 2006, nothing really changed in this RV. Mm -hmm. So a 2006 is going for 80 grand. A 99 is going for 20, 20 grand. Yeah. And it's the same engine, the same chassis, the same wheels, the same, the same everything. suspension. The outside, the headlights were a little bit different, but that's pretty much it. And so yeah, we went down to South Carolina, picked this thing up, drove it home. And since then, this has been our baby. She's part of yeah. our family. We put in 40,000 miles on this thing, not even one little hiccup at all. No. We bought it with 26,000 miles on it, a 1999 with 26,000 miles, so which the, is really cool. The crazy thing is we know a lot of people that have brand new rigs, brand new fifth wheels, RVs, and crazy things are happening to them, like the belt breaks and smashes everything in the engine, or tires fly off, or crazy things. like. And I'm like, what, this girl, knock on wood. She, like literally, we haven't even blown a tire yet. Now I hope I didn't just jinx myself. I'm gonna get some wood too here. <laughs> like nothing bad has happened at all. She is 100% dependable. Took us all over the country, literally 40,000 miles worth of Back traveling in the US. Not one issue. We had a, when we were doing a lot of high-end weddings a few years ago, we had a job in Vegas on Monday. Yes. And we had a job in New York on Saturday. So we looked at each other no, and it was Friday. We, we said, had to be there by Friday. Do you think we can drive from Vegas to New York in four days in the RV? And we calculated it. If we did 16 hours a day, hours. four days in a row without even a hiccup, we can make it. Do not recommend that <laughs> we had to a, anyone. We had a contingency plan in case something went wrong. We'd hop on a flight and get to the other wedding. Yeah. But we made it there without even nothing. Not, it was nothing amazing. Happened, yeah. yeah. And we're like, holy moly. And this, this guy drove every single one of those 40,000 miles because you're not gonna catch this girl behind that wheel. We should do a video where you drive the RV for the uh, first time. That'd be really cool. Oh, that would be funny. We should do that. <laughs> if you guys wanna see that, put some uh, comments on the, below. <laughs> so I'll take a step back, and now we have entered the dining room and the kitchen. So what we've done here is made this super cute and modern. We covered all of the countertops and the table, all of the countertops, because it's quite large, <laughs> with Corian. And um, we did this cool black splash, black, what the heck? Backsplash with we want we originally were gonna do the top the you know the actual little tiles, but you know when weight is a concern with an RV, we just we discovered these stickers and I was like mind blown. So we covered it with these uh gray and white black stickers and it looks like a real backsplash. So crazy. And so 
What else? Oh, and I talked about this in another video, but this faucet right here has stolen my heart. We had this little RV faucet that you couldn't do anything with. You couldn't even do the dishes. Water would spray everywhere. And so I saw this guy and I went, oh yeah, yeah, we're getting him. He comes down. We have a double-sided sink. Super awesome. Um, we added a filtration system here, which we talk about in another video. RV must-haves. Check it out. And then, yeah, so this is our kitchen. What do you think? Super cool. We have pretty much we have every kitchen need you would want, right? We have the microwave, we have the stovetop, we have an oven, fridge, freezer, and then we have a bunch of all of our other appliances in the closet. So, I mean, this is a full house, but in a tiny home setting. So we have a V10 in this thing, and I might go up the hill. Some hills I go up like 20 miles an hour. Some slower some, than the diesel pushers. The bicyclists <laughs> are faster than us. That's so, true. but with us, it's all about the journey, right? So if you think about a diesel pusher cost minimum 100,000, uh, a gas RV we got this for 20,000. If you take that $80,000 difference, you know what? I'll get to the spot two hours after you get to. I the can spot. do a lot better things <laughs> with, with $80,000 $80, so, than having a so diesel opposed to a gas. I won't go up the hills as fast. And sometimes diesel is cheaper than gas, but it doesn't really make a difference. But the maintenance on a diesel engine is a lot more than is the maintenance more? on a gas so engine. So I know people so. have commented asking us about which is better, gas or diesel. And honestly, we, I, we were dead set on a diesel. We we're like, oh, it's more this and that, it's more powerful. Great marketing. But <laughs> it's not necessary, you know? We towed a 5,000 pound car behind yeah. this thing. It's good. Yeah. It's good, man. And so it depends. What's your price point? Right. What are your priorities? Um, for us, we just take the slow lane yeah. and we just cruise and we have a good time. Hey, we'll get there eventually. You know, and, and there's the people that fell a lot past oh, us. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. Let me get out so, of your way. I'll see you in two hours. Yeah. I have a beer ready for me. So a little family tradition that we started with all of these travels is we have to get a little something from everywhere we go. So it could be a magnet, a sticker, little like these cool surfboards, but it's, it's so awesome for the kids. I think the kids more than anything, love, love, love being able to put it up on this wall and look and every, every one of these things right here has memories attached to it, which is super cool. I mean, Bali, Wildwood, New Jersey, Route 66, Zion Canyon. So every single one of these has amazing memories attached to it. That's something that you can do in your RV because instead of it just being kind of on the cold side where it's just, everything is just as it is, you start making it super homey. I think that's really important to us is making it really homey. Everywhere the kids look, it feel, it's home. It's not an RV or a tiny space, it's home. And for them, that's all that matters. Show us what you got on the fridge there behind you. All right, so what's on the fridge? So this fridge was a little tricky. <laughs> We were like, oh man, let's do the blackboard chalk, um, the blackboard uh, paint. And so we did, and we're like, oh, let's get those markers, like the chalk markers. And for our first maiden voyage, we will draw everything. And the kids were five years ago, so the kids were much younger. And everybody got a chance to do something. We went to Shasta, what's it called? Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta. So we got it here and all, whatever the kids thought. But the only problem was, it doesn't wipe off. <laughs> This is now a staple to the RV. And so, you know, we gotta touch it up here and there because from going like this, yeah, whatever. But keeping it real right here. Now let's talk about the bathroom. <laughs> All right, so I wanna tell you guys, if you do buy an older RV, or really any RV, because it could happen to new ones too. We bought this knowing really nothing. We were just super excited to get an RV. So. We, the guy that we bought it from told us about, it has a little delamination and we're like, okay, whatever. As if it's got like, like a dirty spot on it, you know, didn't think anything of it. Had no idea what that meant. It means water damage. People, if you hear delamination, it means water damage. 90% of the time, 99% of the time. So what happened was this sunroof was leaking horribly, apparently, which rotted the entire wall. And so we had to replace the entire bathroom as soon as we got this RV sucked you know those that's not fun but so just a little word of advice do your research have it inspected make sure there's nothing like that because you can avoid that there was other ones on the market that we could have gotten but we want this one for whatever reason and this one had the damage so, 
Just hard hard research. lesson learned, right? Just do your research. Because, you know, now we know. We wouldn't buy an RV again that had that kind of delamination. Anyways, so yeah, we made this a super cute, fun bathroom. This is a residential um, vanity for a house, which is awesome because, you know, RV bathrooms are usually like an airplane bathroom. No storage, no nothing. And so, yeah, I love this bathroom. Okay, and last but not least. Oh, baby oh, Yoda. Oh, baby Yoda. Isn't he so cute? The newest addition to our family. All right, baby Yoda, go take a nap. All right, so the last element of this is the bedroom. Now, all five of us sleep wall to wall right here. It is so spacious and so roomy. <laughs> Just kidding. Just the kids sleep back here. We've tried multiple different ways of making bunks and this and that. It originally came with a queen and two nightstands and um, that wasn't gonna work. So we ripped it out. Jimmy's super handy. He made this little setup with bunks and those kids never slept in the bunks. And we're like, well, that's a lot of wasted space. And so we need to figure out something else. So we got a king size mattress and custom made foam on both sides. So it's literally a super duper size king mattress. Um, that the kids sleep on. That's Nixon Spot, Ryder Sky, and guys, they love it. It's so, everyone goes, oh, they need their own room. We tried that, they didn't care. They wanted to go back in the RV. Who would have known? They love it. They want to kill each other sometimes during the day, but they snuggle with each other at night. It is adorable. And me and Jimmy sleep out on the couch in front. People say, why don't you give the kids the couch and you sleep here? The couch is a lot smaller than this, and there's three kids. When we originally were gonna buy an RV, we wanted the bunkhouse, of course, and, but we could not find a damn bunkhouse. So we're like, you know, we're gonna make it work no matter what, we're gonna roll with it. And that's what we did. And then, like I said about the airbrush artist, he, every kid got to design what they wanted. So we got Ryder, Skyler, Nixon over here. And then we did a little beach scene in the back. But yeah, this is, this is it. It's colorful, it's bright. I think that was my main thing. I wanted it to be bright and colorful. And so I think we've achieved that. What do you guys think? Now let's check out our massively long hallway. <laughs> now what have we done with this long hallway? We have adorned it with family photos. Now, like I said earlier, it's all about customizing it and making it personal and homey. And so we've done that here. We have all of our family pictures. We had a, fr a photographer friend take all of these absolutely adorable pictures of the kids. And it's like the rider was 10 days old here. How cute is that? And then one of our friends made this for us, which is all about how we live our life. Um, here we did a cute little boy and girl bathroom. I'll open that so you can see it. Laugh. So, you know, it's all about just making it yours. You know, it's all about making it yours. Here's whale sharks in the Philippines, Zion, Thailand, Philippines. So make it cute, make it fun, make it you. All right, should we get up? Yeah, let's go. Let's go show them the outside All right, quick. so this is where Jimmy and I sleep. Uh, it's roomy enough, yeah, I've right? Got, I've got about two inches. I'm 6'1". i got about two inches down here. And if we ever need the actual full mattress experience, we kick the kids out and they come out here and they have a slumber party. So yeah, it good. works. Wait, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. So the perk with us being out here, opposed to in the bedroom and the kids being out here, is that they can go back in the bedroom, we close the door, and then we can still have the lights on, we can talk, TV, work, whatever, and we still have the run of the whole RV, opposed to if the kids were gonna sleep out here, we'd have to be quiet, we'd have to, you know, we and, have to settle down with them. And when we get up super early, we like to get up like 4.35 in the morning, go do our workout, but we can be loud out here and turn yes. on some lights and make some coffee and just do what we need to do. Yeah, believe it or not, Pretty much almost every night, one child out of the back will come out here and want to sleep. I'm like, there's no room. Go back to bed. You please, know, most parents please, say, get in I the back, her. but we can't do it. And there's about a two foot gap right here, so. <laughs> we can't do it. So, what do we got? I, I'm like this, hanging off the edge, about to fall. And I'm against the wall. But a kid Our in the car. little guy or girl is sprawled out there. As long as they're comfortable, I guess that's all that matters. <sighs> so, yeah. Or midway through the night, they're here, and I hop in the back, and I'm in the mattress. So, yeah, we just make it work. <laughs> Let's go check out the outside. Let's go. Yeah. That was funny. Oh, that was almost a good nap. <laughs> it's close to the mosquitoes get in. Ah, oh, it smells like fire. Someone's barbecuing some ribs Look or at something. the outside of this thing. Jeez All right. Louise. So, 
What may scare people away with getting an older RV is the outside, right? Because the exterior gets sun damaged, the decals get faded, it may look like a dingy white or whatever, sun like burn. ours did. Yeah. Ours was all of that. And so you know what we did? We had the whole thing wrapped. And that is an inexpensive way of getting a facelift for your RV. Ooh, good way to put it. Yeah, it's a facelift for the RV. The typical swoosh design on the RV isn't necessarily something we wanted anyways. And so, since we had, <laughs> yeah, since we had kind of a retro looking RV already, we said, let's go with a retro look. Yeah. So if you follow the diagram of the new decal, it covers up exactly where the old one was. I had to scrape it off. It took me and Nixon about three days I to scrape it off. I think I was in there off. too. Yeah. Uh, with it's a, actually not a hard process. You heat up the decal. And you get a plastic razor blade. Don't use a real razor blade because you'll mess everything oh, up. Oh, that would be bad. So you get it all off. We dropped it off at the wrap store. I don't know, I think it was like $3,000, $2,600, or something like that. Yeah. We picked it up the same day, super fast, and voila, we got and a new since, RV. Since we've had all of the blue and gray, we have added our website, our logo on there to add more splashes of pink and super fun and funky stuff. So that's been maybe another $1,000, $1,500 on top of that. But I mean, that's optional. No one needs to do that. But you can get the whole thing wrapped, $3,500, so, so, the entire thing. But get something that fits your budget, Get something that allows you to have financial freedom. Yes. Because there is no better feeling in the world than not having any bills. Yep. No utilities, no power, sewer, gas, trash, whatever else is out there, telephone, internet, all that stuff. So I have to say something. I was looking on Face. I'm on I am a member of the full-time RV families Facebook group. And someone said, can you guys please tell me, I, I was looking at RV spots and they're like 35 plus a night. How is this even afford more affordable than living in a house or renting? And I'm like, wait a minute, what do you mean? Like, you don't do it nightly. If you're gonna live in the RV, you usually go by month or something like that because if you go with a monthly rate, there's places we've stayed where it was a a $400 a month. I think in Boise, Idaho, there was, which was a beautiful area, you're in Boise, it was $400 a month. And I'm thinking, are you are you serious? Like, that's crazy. And so, and, and if you do like Thousand Trails membership, stuff like that, you can invest in places to stay where it costs you almost nothing. So if RV, you know, if you want a full-time RV and do that kind of a lifestyle, it can be so inexpensive. If you boondock all the time, it can be literally, I think one of our we friends have, says $5 a day because a whole, they boondock. Yeah, a whole group of friends that, that they pride They're living on nothing on five bucks a day. Because like, that's man, what that's they amazing. do. But now they invest in money in solar and all this yeah, yeah. to make them self-sufficient while they're out there. But if this is something that you seriously want to look into, oh my gosh, it's a rabbit hole of amazingness because Ooh. you really can be completely self-sufficient. You don't have to be, you know, with all the utilities and all the overhead and this and that. And then what you get is freedom because when you open up your RV door and step outside, nature is your playground. It's your backyard. And you are definitely trying something new. Wow. Great segue. Get out there and try something new, guys. Yes. Get an old RV and live your life to the fullest. Oh. Have fun. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so hot. Yeah, me too. All right, so we got that.